The difference between profit and loss is razor thin in today's market. Luckily, your GSI dealer is there to help you stay in the black. Capturing futures carry and improving your basis with increased on-farm storage on average could earn a 50 cent per bushel difference. Taking advantage of early harvest and saving with on-farm drying makes a profitability difference. Proven and dependable grain systems that boost your bottom line, that's the GSI difference. Hello again, basketball fans. Welcome back to the 68th annual Conrad Allen Holiday Tournament. It is trophy day, and it's time for the third place game between the Sisting Running Lions and the Wildcats of Lovejoy High School. I'm Randy Olson, courtside, along with longtime basketball official Ron Standard. This should be quite a contrast of, of different styles and uh, a unique matchup here between Lovejoy and Sisting. Really, both teams like to get up and down the floor. Uh, and neither team really has a whole lot of size. Yeah, this will be another interesting matchup. I know when we were here last week for um, the regular season game between Sisney and Wayne City, we were uh, we said that um, Sisney would probably be playing late late today in a trophy game. We just didn't know which one. Mm -hmm. And here they are playing the third place game against uh, Lovejoy, and we said they'd probably be a, playing in a trophy game as well when we saw them play. So here we are, third third place matchup. Let's and, talk about – go ahead. Well, the, I mean, these teams certainly don't see each other in the regular season. Oh, so no, no. This will be interesting. This will be good probably for both teams. Yeah. You know, both teams uh, can benefit from having this game on their schedule today. It's a long drive for Lovejoy from the Metro East area. as uh, about a two-hour drive, according to their bus driver, to come over here. And uh, they have, uh, looks like, s what, six players with them That's tonight? That's what I see, yeah. Six they, players with them tonight. The other yeah. night they played with they five. played with five the night and, and made it through without any injuries or yeah. foul trouble or whatever. So they have six tonight. Let's talk about how both teams got here. Sisney running Lions on the first night of the tournament. Last Saturday beat Weber Township 55-53 in a nail-biter. Then they beat the Hamilton County JV team 49-25. Then they lost last night to North Clay in the semifinal game. 67-58 to put them in this third-place game here uh, tonight. That's uh, what happened to the Sisney running Lions to get here in this third-place game. The Lovejoy Wildcats, they uh, beat Edwards County in their first game of the tournament, 61-36. And then they beat South Central, 62-47. They did that with just the five players, like I said. And then uh, they lost last night to host Wayne City Indians in a, in a wild one. 49-46 the final last night. Lovejoy losing to Wayne City, and so that puts Lovejoy in this third-place game here against Sisney. So really anything can happen. Um, how a team responds from a loss last night with a short turnaround, that's that's going to be the difference in this game. Though. Yeah, I, I did not see that game. I don't know if, uh, I mean, a three-point defeat, I don't know if they had the ball with a chance to, to tie that or anything like that. I don't, I don't know the circumstances. I, I do know that in that... Wayne City Lovejoy game. Wayne City jumped out of the gate early, 10 to 2, to lead it. You know, early on, 10 uh -huh. to 2, and uh, and led pretty well wire to wire. Although it was pretty close, uh, according to Coach Jake Talbert. But well, a lot uh, of times, I mean, uh, it sounds silly, but a lot of times, with six players can work in your favor because these guys uh, say, hey, you know, they all get together and and just uh, play for each other and uh -huh. and say, you know, hey, we're up against it here today, and uh, let's see what we can do. Uh, let's see what happens. That's right. Yeah. We're going to follow along with the public address announcer as we introduce the members of each team. Sisney will be the visitors on the scoreboard in this third place game wearing their traveling orange uniforms trimmed in the blue. Look a little bit like the Fighting Illini, of course. And a good group of Sisney fans here. Yeah. I think we're sitting right in the middle of the Sisney contingent here, <laughs> it looks like, aren't we? They have a really nice crowd here. Number one is Gavin Harrell. Harrell is a 5'7 sophomore. Number 23 is Cooper Bowen. That is the coach's son. Kevin Bowen, of course, the coach. He's just a sophomore, 5'10. 
And an Atwood, one of three Atwoods on the Sisney team. Anden is a 6'1 junior. Landon Keck, he wears number 20. And Keck is a 5'11 sophomore. And then Russell Best rounds out the starting five. He's a six-foot senior. He's the only senior on the squad. Yeah, and uh, a lot of young players in this tournament range, so this, this will be a great tournament next year. Yeah. We'll let you see the Sisney cheerleaders do their opening cheer as we get ready then to meet the Lovejoy Wildcats. So, again, Sisney goes with Harold Keck, Bowen, Atwood, and Best. And the uh, tallest guy on the floor for Sisney is 6'1". Good. And now for the Lovejoy Wildcats. But he can handle the ball, and he's a good free throw shooter. <laughs> they are coached by Kim Haywood, Jr. Jeremiah McLaurin is number five. Pierre Lucas wears number 12. He's a 5'10 senior. Uh, I didn't catch that freshman's name. No, I did not either. Jeremy McLaren is a 6'1 sophomore. They didn't pull their warm-ups off until right now, so we couldn't really follow along with the numbers there for you. So, again, we got Pierre Lucas, number 12. You got Jeremy McLaren. They're calling him McLaren instead of McLaurin. McLaren and Jeremy and Jeremiah, three and five. Then you got number two is Burlwyn Reed. He's a 5'9 senior. So you got two, three, five, 12, and 21 is Odell Jordan. He's the freshman. As the shot is missed underneath, and Lovejoy has a rebound. Where the basketballs is Reed. Reed over to uh, McLaren. That's uh, Jeremiah McLaren. Getting got Jeremiah and Jeremy. They're both sophomores. Out front to Pierre Lucas. Lucas around a screen. Left behind him there. Out to Reed. Reed inside the lane. Puts up a shot. Missed it. Rebound Sisti. As Gavin Harrell gets it ahead in the front court. Harrell out to Atwood. Atwood's going to put up a 16-footer. Got it. Atwood puts Sisney on the board. One of those mid-range jumpers you don't yeah, see too much. Yeah, I was just going to say that. Yeah, that was pretty. Lost start. Yeah. And we got our scoreboard fixed after that uh, freezing issue we had there in the uh, third quarter of the previous game. I'm glad we got that back with you. Left side, here is a three-pointer by the freshman. Jordan, that won't go, but the stick back is up and in. Who got that on the stick back? Jeremiah McLaren. Ties the game at two apiece. Sisney back in the front court. We're playing for the third place hardware here. Harrell will pull up for a jumper. It's short. Ball is chased down the corner. It's picked up by Lovejoy. Coming away with it is Reed. Reed will bring it up. Reed to Lucas. Here's a long three put up out front. It's too strong by McLaurin. That's uh, Jeremy. And it's cleared out by Sisney. In the corner, Cooper. Missed it short. And rebound by Reed. They'll get it ahead to the freshman, Jordan. Skip it over in the corner now. And back out front to Jeremy McLaurin. They'll reset the offense to Pierre Lucas. All tied up at 2-2, 5-32 to play here in the first quarter. Lucas wheels and deals between Sisney defenders. Puts up the shot and it's taken away by the run Lions. We'll push it ahead to Atwood. <coughs> Out to Harrell. They'll skip past it over here to Keck. 
<laughs> to Cooper now inside to Atwood to turn around. That's a good looking shot. It's good. 4 2 Sisney. Atwood on the nice turnaround there. Yeah. I believe he's their go to guy. Again, just one senior on this team for Sisney Running Lions. That bodes well for Coach Bowen in the future. This Lovejoy team already has a victory over Harrisburg in the they do. Murfreesboro tournament. They sure do. Pierre Lucas with it to Jeremy McLaren. Now there's a tie up in the corner as Odell Jordan got tied up. And the possession arrow will leave it with Lovejoy. We'll have the championship game after this one. It'll be North Clay against Wayne City. This place will fill up then, won't it? Be a few people in here. Here's a shot from the wing, and it's too strong, but there's an offensive rebound. Back up and in by Pierre Lucas. That ties the game at four. Sisney back in the front court again. Yeah, you want to perform well in your own tournament, and uh, Wayne City Indians have made it to the championship game. Mm -hmm. And there's a foul on Lovejoy, which is going to send and and Atwood to the line. First foul of the game. And let's see, they called that on Pierre Lucas. Yep. His first. Atwood's free throw. Good. I've seen He was 12 out of 12 the last game I saw him play, Randy. Mm -hmm. yep. so here we go. One for one. And two for two. Not the guy you want to foul, is it? No. Lovejoy will walk it up. Andon's got all their points for Sisney. Reed with the basketball. You would think that uh, Lovejoy would be playing an up-tempo game, but they're actually being very methodical right now. Taking their time. Trying to pick the defense apart a little bit. They go inside the lane. The shot is missed in there by McLaurin. And taken away by Sisney. Here's a drive. Shot is missed by Cooper. He's fouled. And that'll send Cooper uh, Bowen to the line. I think that's Pierre Lucas again. Right, he's got two mm, already. Well, they only got six players. Yeah, right? yeah. And uh, he is the, well, I guess they, do, they did start two seniors in this one. Cooper's free throw is good. He may be their tallest player out there, too. They're going to have to protect him. Seven to four, Sisney. Second one's also good. Three thirty-four left here in the third in the uh, first quarter of play. The third place game. Lovejoy back in the front court with Reed. Yeah, so far this is not the track meet that that first game was. No, not at all. Definitely not at all. It's uh, much more methodical offensive style at this point. As Reed has it, spins in the lane, dishes it in the corner. Shot is not there. Comes back out to Reed again. Reed will give it to Jordan. Back to Reed. Now to the top to Lucas. Lucas almost lost the ball. Now they come back in the corner. A long three is put up, and that's off the mark. No good by Jordan. And it's rebound by Sisney. They want to throw it ahead. And a foul is going to be called as getting back on defense and committing that foul, I think, is Jeremiah McLaurin. Yep. Out of bounds on the baseline to Sisney. It's the first foul on McLaurin. That's a third team foul on Lovejoy. Harrell has the basketball for Sisney. Comes over to Atwood. Back out front to Cooper Bowen. Now here's a shot from the right wing and knocking it down with a nice stroke is Landon Keck. Keck with a three ball and Sisney's up by seven, 11-4. Back in the front court comes Lovejoy. It's Reed again. Reed gives way to Jer Jeremy McLaurin. Yeah, Jeremy and Jeremiah. They're both sophomores, so I'm going to guess they're uh, brothers or twins. Could be, yeah. From the corner, it's up and in by Jeremy McLaurin. They give him a three on that? I think I they believe did. So. I believe they did, yes. 11 to 7. Sisney with a four-point lead and the basketball. Inside it goes to Atwood. He tries to 
Throttle it down low, but it's taken away and then stolen back by Harrell. Harrell gives up the pass. Inside. It comes to Russell Best. He misses the shot, and then a foul is going to be called. It'll be another foul on Lovejoy. <clears throat> Had that net tangled up there in that room again. Yeah. Keeps wanting to do that at this end, doesn't it? Here's Atwood with a shot. It's good. Shot that one off the dribble that time. Gives Sisney a six-point lead. Yeah, he's got eight points already. Minute 38 left here in the first quarter. Here's a long shot that won't go by Jordan, all right, by uh, Odell Jordan. And on the tie-up, possession Nero gives it to Sisney. Well, that, uh, that Ren Lake game, was won by Ren Lake in double overtime. Double overtime. Over Olney Central, 92 to 88. Jackson Creel with 37 points in wow. that game for Ren Lake. He's a former Mount Vernon Ram star. Yeah. Actually was uh, most valuable player of the South Seven Conference yeah. uh, his senior year. So a big I win for Ren Lake there at double overtime, 92 88. Shot is up, no good in there by. Pierre Lucas. I think Jackson got an got an extra year because of the He did because of COVID. COVID. Yep, they, yeah. all, they all did. So it's really his third year at Ren Lake. Here's a drive inside, and the shot is short that time by Landon Keck. Rebound by Lovejoy. They'll take it back the other way. In the lane. Dish in the corner to Pierre Lucas. His shot won't go. I don't know if he's back yet. Ren Lake's been playing without their best player. Yeah. From point, point guard, from yeah. From Collinsville, yeah, yeah. He has a broken hand. Yeah, he uh, was supposed to get some kind of a hard um, cast thing on there, I, I thought. Mm -hmm. Or maybe it was the soft one. And I don't know. It hasn't gotten done yet for whatever reason, so he's still not back yet. Junior colleges usually have a long break this time of year, so mm -hmm. yeah. he'll be back uh, probably their first game they play in 2023. Mm -hmm. We are down to 10 seconds left here in the first quarter. Let's see what Lovejoy does with it. A spin in the lane. The shot is up, and it's good nice. by Burlwyn Reed. And the horn sounds to end that first quarter play. Our score is Sisney leading Lovejoy in this third-place game, 13-9 at the Conrad Allen Holiday Tournament. We're back with second direction in just a moment here on areasports.net. It's the heating season, and Wayne White Propane and Sporting Goods has you covered with fast, reliable propane delivery service for your home or farm. And if you need those propane bottles filled for your grill or camper, Wayne White Propane and Sporting Goods can do it. Looking for a wide selection of guns and ammunition? You'll find it at Wayne White Propane and Sporting Goods. You can even search online through their website at WayneWhitePropane.com. And don't forget, they also sell propane grills, smokers, and deep fryers at Wayne White Propane and Sporting Goods. All right. Well, back here at Wayne City High School, we were just saying that off off mic there, we this is not the type of start that we expected. We thought this would be a real up and tempo game, but it hasn't been that way so yeah. far, Ron. Yeah, it's been a half court game so far. Yeah, and the game right before it was a track meet. It so. sure was. Yeah, the game right before us, the fifth place game was won by Crab Orchard over Weber Township, 74-71. The seventh place game went the way of Gallatin County as they beat Edwards County. 52 to 38. You know, that's, that's two losses uh, that we know of for Weber by a total of five points. Yeah, you're right. I beat uh, by Sisney by two and, mm -hmm. and Crab by three. That's a couple of tough losses. A couple of real tough losses for them. I mean, that's how, you know. I mean, In this tournament. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. All right. We start uh, second quarter action. Love Joel have the ball first. They trail it by four, 13 to nine. Let's see what happens. Love Joel with only six players here with them today. Here's a shot from the freshman from the corner. He misses it off the back iron. No good. His name's Odell Jordan. That the follow-up is good. And that was by uh, Jeremy McLaurin. They gave him the three ball. Yeah, he's got two threes. And that cuts the lead to one. You have to guard him out there. Atwood tries to get it down to best. It's knocked away and stolen by Lovejoy. Back the other way. Again, the Wildcats taking their time here. Trying to size up the defense. And ball goes out of bounds. Yeah. 
McLaurin will trigger it in. And he comes out to uh, Pierre Lucas. Long three, it won't go. Offensive rebound, back up, and in by Jeremiah McLaurin. And that gives Lovejoy the lead at 14-13. Yeah. So they just very quietly and methodically come back and take the lead. Let's see how Sisney answers here. Little 5-0 run. Uh-huh. Cooper Bowen with it. Out to Keck. Keck misses on the shot. And there's a rebound by McLaurin. Jeremiah with it. Jeremiah over to Burlwyn Reed. Coach is up hollering at instructions to him. Goes around the pick. Tries to create in the lane. Picks up his dribble and... We're going to have a foul called. It's going to be on Atwood. Yeah, I bailed him out, right? He was trapped mm -hmm. there in he the was lane. Trapped. Probably got a three-second call. Yeah, he was trapped. They don't uh, get the uh -huh. foul. Yeah, you're right. Incoming pass comes to Pierre Lucas. It's about the only time you see that called anymore is if you get trapped in there and can't shoot it or pass right. it. Right. Shot in the lane won't go this time, and Atwood gets the rebound. Come back the other way with it. Sisney needs points. There's a dry baseline, and that won't go. Shot would not fall for Landon Keck. Lovejoy with the lead in the basketball. Reed out front to McLaurin. Now Pierre Lucas again. <clears throat> They, they just kind of spread it out and then try to beat you off the dribble. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> they use some high screens. Here's Lucas with it. Splits defenders, takes it inside the paint, missed the shot, but he's fouled, and Pierre Lucas will go to the line for Lovejoy. Lucas is a 5'10 senior, and that foul was called on Atwood. No, I'm sorry. 21. 21. It was Caden uh, Dagg. Yeah, Caden Dagg was in the game. The 5'11 sophomore in the game for Sisney. Committed that first foul. Two fouls on Sisney now. Three on Lovejoy as the free throw is made on the first one, making it 15 to 13. In favor of Lovejoy. Missed the second one. Sisney with a rebound, and then taken away by Lovejoy. McLaurin missed the shot. Ball lost out of bounds. Stays with the Wildcats. 5.08 to play here in the first half of this third place game. He'll get it in way out front to Lucas. Here comes the screen. Lucas gets around it. Now to the drive inside, and the shot is up and in. Now that was actually Lucas. Lucas scored on the bucket. Makes it 17 to 13 in favor of Lovejoy. Four point lead. 4.44 to play in the half. Sisney needs points. Yeah, it's an 8 0 run, Randy. Sisney's been shut out so far in this second quarter. Yeah, it's about half over. Harrell gets it over three. for a three ball. There you go, Cooper Bowen. Makes it a one-point game on the three ball, 17-16. Love Joy back in the front court. <coughs> Reed with it to Lucas. Lucas in the lane, leaves it out to McLaurin. They'll reset it out front again. Here's a drive from the elbow, shot won't go. By Reed. <laughs> Rebound Sisney. They want to push it. They do. Atwood from the baseline scores, and Sisney has the lead. 18 17, 344 to play in the half. He can score in a lot of ways. Yes, he can. And in Atwood. Uh -huh. I don't know if he has a favorite shot or not, but I've seen him make a lot of different types of shots in this tournament. <laughs> that one is short. 
by Reed. And we've got timeout called by Lovejoy. Sisney has um, came back, took the lead, then Lovejoy has regained the lead. It's 19-18 Lovejoy with timeout on the court. And we will take one as well and be right back here in just a moment. Well, Sisney played in the championship game of the Nioga Thanksgiving tournament, a tournament that they won. And in this Conrad Island tournament, they're in the third place game today against a Lovejoy team. But I guess their other tournament, they still have a conference tournament. Yes, there so will still be a Midland Trail conference That'll be tournament. their third tournament. Right. Uh -huh. Yep, sure will be. From the right wing, it's nothing but net for Landon Keck. That's two from there. He likes that spot. Yeah, good looking shot there. Puts Sisney back up by two, 21 19. The lefty. 309 left and a half. Well, Joy in the front court with Lucas. Lucas down the lane, leaves it in the corner. And the shot is hit by. He got one, didn't he? Odell Jordan. He's been firing him up out there, and he finally <laughs> got him one. And that one was, he was guarded more on that one than any of the rest of you them. You know, he's only five foot six. Yeah. He's a short guy out there. Boy, he has a high arch He, put, he shot. puts a lot of arch on the <laughs> shot. And sometimes you don't think it's going to get there. And that one is short. And rebound by Lovejoy. That's his spot, though. He's, yep. he's going back to it. Yeah, he keeps. Uh, he keeps spotting up there, wanting the ball. He's over there again waiting for it. <laughs> Got him standing there. On the left side, well, they'll try it over there. And uh, Jeremy McLaurin says, hey, I can do this too. Watch he's, me. Yeah, he's got three threes. Watch me. 25-21. Yeah, these guys can shoot. Lovejoy up by four, 209 left here in the first half. Almost a steal, and it is. Back the other way, two on one break. In the lane, shot up and in by Burrow and Reed. Six point lead and coach Kevin Bowen says we better yeah. we better chat about this a little bit. The game's actually being played, Randy, I think at a pace that, that uh Ludbury wants it to be played at. Good point. Um, and uh, Sissy's just not getting the ball out and running with it like they want to. Well, Lovejoy runs when they need to, yeah. you know, but otherwise they're just kind of picking you apart there and run that methodical offense, spreading the floor, and then yeah. trying to beat you off the dribble. Right. You Somebody know. drives the lane. and uh -huh. They just beat you off the dribble, sometimes have a high screen set for them, but uh, really it's a lot of one-on-one uh, -on -one play. You know, in the open court there, in the uh, spread out offense. Okay, Sisney will have the ball. Back in the front court, trailing it by six. It's the biggest lead of the game here for Lovejoy. Sisney led it by four after one quarter. Here's Atwood with it. His fadeaway will not go. Lovejoy with the rebound. Out on the dribble they come. Jeremiah McLaurin to Pierre Lucas. He misses it. And there's a rebound that time for Sisney. Russell Best comes away with it. Running Lions in the front court. Almost a steal, uh, and it is. Picked uh, off again by Lovejoy, and the layup is good. That's You can't telegraph those passes. Right, that's what I was going to say, telegraphed it. Uh -huh. I saw that coming. Burrow and Reed with the theft and the deuce. 29-21, it's an eight-point game, and there's a foul. That's the third foul on uh, Lucas. Well, he does have one player on the bench. It doesn't look like he's going to go to him, though. We're approaching one minute left here in the first half. Here's a long three by Harrell. It won't go. And rebound by Jeremiah McLaurin for Lovejoy. He takes it all the way down and is fouled. 
Blocking foul called on Sisney. I think that's on Russell Best. And that'll send Jeremiah to the line. Stops the clock with 54 seconds left here in the second quarter. I need to change my uh, scoreboard to second quarter. There we go. Sisney led it after one, 13 to nine, but it's been all love joy here in the second quarter. In the game for Sisney, number zero is Cade Atwood. He's the freshman. Three Atwoods on this team. He did take out uh, Pierre Lucas. Did he? Okay. Yeah. That's a smart move. He can't get <coughs> fourth foul with 55 seconds to go. And in the game is 24, but I don't see a 24. I see a 24 on the roster for uh, Lovejoy. Shot is in the lane, and it's good. Who hit that for Sisney? Uh, and an Atwood. Cuts it back to a six-point game. Yeah, I don't have 24 in the book. We'll have to check at halftime and find out who 24 is for Lovejoy. It's probably somebody that's listed on the roster. They just changed numbers. Yeah. But we'll, we'll find out for sure. Yeah, there, there's a, there is a 22 and a 23 both, so it's probably one of those guys. Jeremy McLearn skips it over to Jeremiah. Back to Jeremy. We're playing for one shot. Back out to Pierre Lucas. Ten seconds left. Who's going to take the shot? Long one is up, short. Sisney with a rebound, going to have to heave it. He shot it too soon. And it's a little too strong. Yeah. It would have went. Yeah, would have counted. counted had it went, but it just a little too strong off the glass. And after one half of play here, it's Lovejoy, 29, and Sisney, 23. So what was a four-point Sisney lead after one has turned into a complete 10-point turnaround. It's a six-point halftime lead here for Lovejoy in this third-place game of the 68th annual Conrad Allen Holiday Tournament. And we will come back and take a look at the halftime stat, talk more about this tournament, and preview the championship game as well. All that and more coming up here on areasports.net. Vaughn Equipment is a family-owned and operated business in Fairfield that's committed to providing quality equipment to the farm, construction, tractor, trailer, marine, and oil field industries. They feature a great selection of new and pre-owned trucks, trailers, farm equipment, construction equipment, and rental equipment. Their inventory changes weekly, and you can see it all in person or on their website. Whatever you're looking for to do the job right, Vaughn Equipment can help you. They're located at 1102 South 1st Street in Fairfield or call 842-3500. Carter Turf and Tractor is now open in their beautiful new location on West Main Street in Fairfield in the former Save-A-Lot building. Carter Turf and Tractor is your area dealer for high quality Kubota tractors in a variety of sizes. Perfect for a landscaping business or to easily handle a variety of jobs around your home or farm. They can customize a solution for your needs. They also have the Kubota RTV utility vehicles for on-road and off-road transportation and hauling needs. When there's mowing or lawn work to be done, Carter Turf and Tractor has you covered with Exmark riding mowers and walk-behind mowers. They also feature a good selection of Echo brand brush cutters, trimmers, and chainsaws, as well as Honda and Generac generators. Come in and see for yourself at the new Carter Turf and Tractor, open 8 to 5 Monday through Friday and 8 to 2 on Saturday. Tanker's Doggy Daycare, your dog's home, away from home. Do you have a dog that is shedding? We provide bee shed treatments at Jagger's Doggy Daycare in Mount Vernon. Bee shed treatments get rid of a lot of unwanted hair so it doesn't end up all over your house. Your dog will look better, feel great, and smell wonderful. Call and schedule a bee shed treatment for your dog at Jagger's Doggy Daycare in Mount Vernon. Jagger's Doggy Daycare. Welcome back here to the J. Conrad Allen Gymnasium on the campus of Wayne City High School, the scene for the 68th annual Conrad Allen Holiday Tournament, one of the longest running small school tournaments in the state of Illinois. And this is the third place game. Lovejoy leads it at halftime over Sisney, 29-23. I'm Randy Olson, courtside, along with longtime basketball official Ron Stannard. Ron, that second quarter was a complete turnaround from the first, wasn't it? It was, Randy. Uh, Lovejoy outscored them 20-10 in that quarter. And they lead it here at halftime by six. A little bit of foul trouble, though, for Lovejoy, which is a concern because they only have six players. Yeah, Pierre Lucas has got – I mean, they, they only have a total of uh, four fouls that first half, but three of them was by one player, Pierre Lucas. So uh, uh, coach got him out of there with 55 seconds to go, but I'm sure he'll start the second half with three fouls. Well, tell us about the stats here in the first half. Cool. All right, only three players broke the scoring column for Sisney running Lions, and uh, Andon Atwood 
led all scores with 12. And uh, he is two for two from the free throw line. So, so again, Randy, I've seen him shoot 14 free throws over here, and he's made all 14. I don't know what he did in the other games. But um, Landon Keck had two three-pointers for six. Cooper Bowen had a three-pointer and two free throws for five. Those are the only three uh, players that broke the scoring column for the Sydney Running Lions. They were four out of four from the free throw line as a team and have a total of 23 points in that first half. For Lovejoy, we've got Jeremiah McLaren with four points. Pierre Lucas, the player who has three fouls, has got five points. Jeremy McLaren made three threes in that first half for a total of nine points. Burlwyn Reed has four two-pointers for a total of eight points. And Odell Jordan kicked in with a three-pointer for three. That's a total of 29 points. As I said, they outscored Sisney 20 to 10 in that second quarter. They have also shot four free throws and made one of those. So uh, scored to have a 29-23 Lovejoy. You know, we thought Lovejoy would come up here and want to get up and down the court and run, but that really hasn't been their M.O. They have uh, right. really played a pretty methodical offense. They'll run when they have the opportunity, but uh, they just try to spread the floor a little bit, beat you off the dribble, maybe use a few high screens. But they're very good at anticipating the passes, jumping in the passing lane, picking off a, a telegraph pass and taking it to the other end and converting. They're doing a good job of uh, forcing Sisney to play a half-court game because we know Sisney likes to run up down the floor. Uh -huh. Yep and uh, get, get a lot of points in transition, and uh, Lovejoy's done a good job of holding that down. If you're Coach Kevin Bowen, what are you telling your team at halftime, you think? I think, um, you know, they got to hit the boards and, and just play their game. When they get a rebound, they got to get that out of pass and go. Uh, I mean, they can't uh, – they, they got to play their game, and they're not doing that right now. I thought in the first quarter they did a good job of, of getting Atwood in space. He was finding some openings there in the lane where he would break across the lane. They would find him open with a pass, and he, he made a nice turnaround or two a couple yeah. of times. And I yeah. think they can do more of that right. he here had in the second half if they'll run that. He had eight points in that first quarter. Uh -huh. uh, so, all right, 29-23 is our halftime score. And uh, we'll take a nor another short break, step aside, come back and talk a little bit about the championship game, which will be coming up a little bit later on. What a battle that should be as North Clay takes on Wayne City. Back with more in just a moment. As a craftsman, Gordy had imagination and vision. As a business owner and machinist, he understood all the moving components and how important they were to making things work. When he dreamed of building his business, he knew he needed help. FNB provided the spark necessary to ignite his growth. That partnership has proven to be his best creation yet. Josh Foster at Foster Ventures LLC is a friend to the area farmers. He is your dealer for Mershman Seeds, DeKalb Asgrow, Bravant, and Armor Seed. They also have access to all major chemical brands as well as generic chemicals. There are special seed purchases going on right now and you can save thousands. Book your seed now and pay later. Find out more. Call Josh Foster at area code 618-308-0474. personal price plan helps you create an affordable price just for you. Contact Lynn Braden in McLeansboro for an auto quote today. All right, well, here we are at halftime. Lovejoy leads it over Sisney 29-23 in this third place game. Championship game coming up a little bit later on between North Clay and Wayne City should be a good one as North Clay comes in with that really, really good 1-3-1 defense. And if you're Wayne City, you've got to find a way to solve that, don't you? Yeah, they're, they're going to be a, a tough team to beat in that championship game. As uh, they were able to take care of Sisney, 67-58, in the semifinals last night. And uh, it all starts at the top of that 1-3-1 one, one zone with Fleener. Fleener's got Fleener. such length out there and such quickness and jumping ability. And, you know, in order to penetrate it beyond that point in the zone and start trying to pick the part of 
the zone, you got to get it past Fleener first. Right, and if he gets a steal out in the open court, we all know what's coming next. Yeah, we saw three dunks in a row and three trips down the floor the other day in the uh, North Clay game. So, uh, yeah, their defense is pretty good. And then they've got guys, other guys that can score besides Fleener. It's not just the Logan Fleener show. They've got that, a lot yeah. of guys that, that can uh, take the ball to the hoop and can hit the outside shot. So there's a lot of weapons on that North Clay team. That's true. Wayne City, on the other hand, they got some good shooting last night on the outside by Johnny Durham. They, he hit uh, some big threes in the game. I think he hit five for the game, uh, which was big for Wayne City. And then, of course, you got Justin Durham inside, the big man. And they're going to have to count on him to have a big game if they're going to be successful against North Clay. He's going to have to come ready to play, isn't he? Yeah, the, Wayne City's going to have a big crowd here, and they're playing on their home floor, and they got a chance to win their second tournament championship of the year. Uh, you know, they won the Christopher tournament. Uh-huh. For the first time in, what was it, I think 12 years. and um, I don't know when when was the last time they won this tournament. Do we have that information, Randy? Yeah, that's in the book here. Uh, it's been, uh, been a couple of years. Let's see here. I don't know. Maybe it was we had that COVID year, so which kind of screwed things up and everything. Yeah. Uh, actually, yeah, um, last year they beat, uh, oh, okay. beat Weber in the championship All game. All right. And then there was no tournament in 2020. And the year before that, 2019, North Clay won it. So each of the last two there champions have been Wayne City and North Clay. And they're going to play each so other tonight. play each other tonight. Yeah. So, All right. We are ready for second half action. The teams, of course, change ends, as they always do. And we'll uh, see Sisney have the ball first to start the second half. Again, if you just joined us, Sisney's in the orange uniforms, Lovejoy in the white. Again, I like this game for both of these teams because I think it's going to help each of them later on in the season because this is an opponent you wouldn't typically play. Exactly, yeah. That's why you get into tournaments is to play teams you don't see during the regular season. Yeah, you want to, you want to do that. There's the horn calling both teams back out to the floor, and here comes Lovejoy breaking the huddle. And Sisney will have it. Let's see what kind of adjustments they make to start this second half. That will be interesting to see if they try to uh, get up tempo here. All right. Here we go. Bowen has it out front for Sisney. Looks like the Wildcats will stay in that zone. Here's a nice pass yeah. down low as they thread the needle down to Russell Best, and he scored. Good start. That's Russell Best's first field goal. Move the basketball very well on that possession. Let's see how Lovejoy answers. They'll answer with a three, just like that. Unguarded. Unguarded out there was Pierre Lucas. Pierre Lucas back in the game with three fouls. Here's Harrell again. Out to the top to Bowen. Back to Harrell. He'll skip pass it over to the right side. To Keck. He'll put it up with the left hand and scores. Nice move by Keck. Nice little one-handed jump shot. Cuts it back to five. Lovejoy in the front court again. And Sisney in the zone. Yeah, he's a nice player. When you're not familiar with the other team and you're left-handed, I think that uh, throws him off mm -hmm. a little bit. Yep. Again, they're going to be patient. Take their time out there. Reed with it. Goes in the lane. Leaves it to Lucas. Lucas. That net shot. did it again, that right? That did it again. <laughs> it does it more and more at this end, doesn't it? And he scores to put them back up by seven, 34-27. Here's Atwood with it, has it taken away. Stolen by Lovejoy. And they'll bring it back up. A few costly turnovers in the first half by Sisney Boom. were converted to points, and so was this one. And Jeremy McLearn buries it to give a 10-point lead for Lovejoy. 37-27. Here's top of the key for Bowen. It won't go. Rebound out of there by Jeremy McLaurin. Lovejoy on the attack again. 6.05 to play here in the third quarter. Two-hour drive, two-hour bus drive for Lovejoy from the Metro East area. Yeah, and right now it's looking like they may go home with a third-place trophy. Uh -huh. Their school enrollment is something like 48. Not too many kids in the school. That ball bounced all the way up over the backboard and out of bounds. It'll be Sisney basketball. Is that what it is, 48? Something like that. Yeah, yeah. I think I, I said somewhere 50 to 70 last yeah, time we were here. Not, not many students, no. 
Yeah, I was talking to the bus driver about that in the hospitality room as the shot is missed by Harrell. Atwood with the follow. It won't go. And rebound again by Lovejoy. And we were talking about w exactly where the school is located at. It's really literally only a couple blocks away from where Venice High School used to be. I don't know if you mm -hmm. were ever over there at Venice. Did you ever referee any games at Venice? Or no, not, not at Venice, okay. but, but, you know, All right. uh, people who know Illinois High School basketball know that Venice won a state championship. Oh, yeah. yeah, absolutely. When I played at Flora, we played Venice. Uh -huh. And we played them one year at Venice, another year at oh, Flora. Oh, really? Mm -hmm, we sure did. We got uh, timeout on the floor, and we will take timeout as well and be back with more in a moment here from the Conrad Allen Tournament. This broadcast is made possible by Wiggins Law Office in McLeansboro. They specialize in areas of law such as divorce, family law, mediation, as well as parenting time and parenting responsibility. If you're seeking to establish parenting time or parenting responsibility, otherwise known as custody, you need the guidance and experience of the Wiggins Law Firm. Custody cases are often difficult, complex, and hard to navigate alone. They can help guide you through the complicated legal process. Contact Wiggins Law, LLC, in McLeansboro. They're on Jackson Street, and their number is 643-4488. Back to live action. Love joy with the basketball, but they travel with it. It's a turnover right back to Cisney. 5.03 to play here in the third quarter. It's a 10-point. Lovejoy lead. Sisney led it 13-9 after the first quarter, and Lovejoy led by six at the half, but they've extended it out now to this 10-point bulge. Sisney looking for some points. Here's a bounce pass in underneath. Nothing there. Back out it comes to Cooper. He'll hit it. Nope. Off the rim. No good. Cooper Bowen, the coach's son, couldn't connect on that one. Back the other way comes Lovejoy again. Yeah, Sisney's just not making their shots so far. No, no, game. they're not. They're no. getting shots. They're just not they making They really it. cooled off a lot since that very first quarter, for sure. I think but Venice, Randy, was the Red Devils. Uh, I, believe. I believe you're right. Yeah. Yeah, I believe you're right. Good There's pass. a nice pass, and that's up and Ooh. And a little sprained ankle on the play there by uh, Cooper Bowen, it looks like. He comes up a little gimpy on that. Yeah, I hope he can go. He runs the show for him. No foul called on the situation. It'll be Lovejoy ball. And, oh, I see it on their jersey now. This is uh, uh, Lovejoy is the Wildcats. They are the Wildcats. Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Venice High School's actually been closed for quite a while. Yeah. Again, the Wildcats uh, being very patient out there, trying to beat somebody off the dribble. Here's the freshman from the corner. His high arching shot won't go, and it's out of bounds. Going to belong to Sisney. Yeah, they they right now they don't, things could change, but they don't have to get in a hurry on the offensive end. They've got an eight point lead. Right. Sisney needing some points. Keck has it out. It comes to the top to Noah Leg. That's uh, in there. And. Not Noah Leg, I'm sorry, it was Kate Atwood, but we've got a foul underneath the basket. And that's going to send Annan Atwood to the line. Yeah, fouls on Burwin Reed. It's the first foul of the second half. And for Reed, that is his first, first foul. Atwood at the line, and he buries it. Sisty has been a good free throw shooting team all season long. Yeah, this guy, I'm going to jinx him, Randy, but this guy's automatic. The free throw line. There you go. Four for four. Cuts the lead to six, 37-31. Back in the game for Lovejoy, Pierre Lucas. Again, playing with three personal fouls. Yep. More and more crowd filtering in here, getting ready in anticipation of the championship game between I'm impressed with this Sissy North crowd. North Wayne City. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah, they travel well. But uh, – They've not had much to cheer about so far. No, they've been pretty quiet. But they have cut this 10-point lead to six. Mm -hmm. Here's Pierre Lucas. you got to call travel. something there. There's there's a travel, yeah. yep. So they could cut this to five or three. Big, big turnover there. Let's see if the running Four. Lions can convert. Cooper Bowen will give it off to Kate Atwood, the freshman, and he'll walk it across. At two Atwoods on the floor right now for Sisney. Kate has it. Yeah. 
I think they're brothers and they're a cousin to the other at Wood. Right, exactly. Cooper Bowen misses the shot. There's Keck with the rebound. Tried oh. to get to Atwood, but it's stolen. Pierre Lucas races to the other end and scores nice. for Lovejoy. He put that one into a little another gear that time, didn't he? Yeah. Accelerated all the way to the hole. Under three minutes to play here in the third quarter of play. Yeah, Pierre and it comes Lucas. To Atwood. He's in double figures now. Here's Kate Atwood, and he hits the three pointer. That's a big shot. They that, needed that. That's huge. That'll help. Cut it back to five, 39 34. So they have five players now in the scoring column. That's good. But yeah, they've cut that lead in half. 2.29 to play here, third quarter. The freshman from the corner hits high arching shot again. It will not go. He loves spotting up over there, doesn't he? Yeah, he just hangs That's, out over there and yeah. waits for the ball. Yeah, Odell Jordan is his name. He's only five foot six. He just stands there and waits for the pass to come to him. As uh, the ball is, goes out of bounds, going to stay with Sisney. 2.12 to play here, third quarter. A bucket here would be big for the running Lions. Yeah, could get their crowd in it. So they're down five. Pass comes in to Russell Best. Back out it comes to Cooper Bowen. Back to Best. He'll drive. No, that's actually Atwood. He Atwood. drove baseline and is fouled. And and Atwood will go back to the line for Sisney. Stops the clock with 2.05 to play here in the third quarter. I'll take my chances with him at the free throw yeah, line. Yeah, I think I would too. Yep. Nice rotation on his shot. Nothing but net. Yeah, in the two games that I've seen, Randy, he's right now 17 for 17 from the free throw line. That's pretty accurate. <laughs> Make it 18. Yeah. Cuts the lead to three. They need a defensive stop now. Yeah, they've cut a 10-point lead to three. Uh -huh. And just kind of done it quietly. Yeah, here's Reed with it. Splits defenders, misses the shot. The tip-up is no good. Who wants the ball? It's loose. Russell Best was in there trying to uh, get a piece of it. And possession arrow leaves it for Lovejoy. And it'll be triggered in by Jeremy McClarn. He comes in out to Jeremiah. Back out it comes to Burrow and Reed. Minute 41 left here in the third quarter. Reed dishes it in the corner. <laughs> There's your freshman buddy over there, yeah, Jordan. Yeah, he, he changed corners on us. Yeah. That's literally the first time I've seen him on that side of the floor uh, since you're right. this game started. No, you're right. He's always been on this side. Yeah. He's been at both ends, but he's never been on that side. There's a steal. Sis needed the turnover. They got it. Can they convert? Looking Here's Atwood, Atwood for a three. Got, Got it. it. Big shot, and we're tied. Ten-point lead is gone. 39-39 with a minute 23 left here in the third quarter. Who wants this third-place trophy? It's up for grabs. Lovejoy back in the front court. Shot is forced up by Reed. Won't go, and it's out of bounds to Sisney. Let's see if the running lines can convert now. Chance to take the lead. Inside Atwood. Back out it comes to Cade Atwood. Won't go. And rebound Lovejoy again. He'll push it up. Ah, he's back in his spot. And he left it short that time. Jordan Short on the high archer. Here's Atwood on the other end. Nope. Pierre Lucas with it for Lovejoy. He lost the handle. Steal by Sisney. Atwood has it. He'll send it over to Cade. Now back out to Bowen and 24 seconds left. They're going to run it down for one shot. Yeah, every time I say that, they throw up a shot. <laughs> <laughs> Cooper Bowen with 12 seconds left. Skips it over to Cade. He'll drive baseline, and it rolls off. No good. They're going to get Picked another Picked up by Keck. No, 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 no. Can't get it off in time. After three quarters of play, we haven't settled anything yet, Ron. It's 39-39. No. 
tie ball game here in this third base. Two place close game. games so far. We though. have had two tight ones. Back with more in just a minute here from Green City High School. Do you have a check that needs deposited and don't have time to make a trip to the bank? No problem. With mobile deposit at People's National Bank, just snap a picture of the check with your smartphone, and with a couple of clicks, it's deposited into your account. Depositing a check with a PNB 2 go mobile banking app is just that easy. Just tap, snap, and deposit. Plus, it's free. Download the PNB 2 go mobile banking app today to get started. People's National Bank. We make banking easy. Member FDIC, wireless or service fees may apply. Randy Olson back here with longtime basketball official Ron Stannard. That was a big third quarter for Sisney as they erased a, what was a 10-point deficit, and now we're tied. Yeah, they outscored uh, Lovejoy 16-10 to 10 in that quarter. They were down by six at the half, but got down by 10 in the third quarter and mm -hmm. came all the way back. Yeah. And so, yeah, like you said, here we go. It might as well be 0-0 zero to zero with eight minutes to go. All right, Pierre Lucas still out there playing with three personal fouls for Lovejoy. Anybody in foul trouble for Sisney? No, not at all. They've only got uh, three team fouls the entire game. The entire game. Yeah, and they spread them out amongst three players. So They absolutely. play a pretty clean game. Uh. Yeah. All right, and Sisney will have the ball first to start the fourth and final quarter. Only six total fouls for the game on uh, Lovejoy. Hey, here we go. Who's going to take home the third-place trophy of this Conrad Island Holiday Tournament? Running Lions go into Atwood, and it's slapped out of bounds, going to stay with Sisney. More and more people trying to get into the gym for this championship game coming up next between North Clay and Wayne City. We'll have that one for you, too, here on Areasports.net. Here it comes to Cade Atwood. Back out to Bowen. Oh, and there's a steal. Lovejoy's got it. And they got Good numbers pass. down to Lucas. Missed the bunny. Kate Atwood with the rebound. Kate's getting a lot of playing time. This he second is getting half. a lot of playing time. Sure is. Out to Cooper Bowen again. Back to Cade. Skips it over. Now back out to Bowen. To Cade. He'll fire the three. Oh. In and out. That was halfway down. He yeah. came out of there. That would have been a big shot for Sisney. Instead, Lovejoy has the ball with a chance to take the lead. Left side, here's a shot that is off the mark, no good by Jeremy McLaren. Cade's got two rebounds down there. Here's Andon Atwood taking it to the glass and scores. And, and he'll have a trip to the charity stripe. That gives Sisney the two-point lead, 41-39. And Atwood can add to it. 7.06 to play in the game. And he buries it. 22 points, Randy Brandon Atwood. He's still perfect from the free throw line. Who says free throws aren't important? They're very important. Sisney would not have the lead without his free throws. Let's see what Lovejoy does this trip down the floor. Here's Lucas with it. Sisney needs to play good defense here. No fouls yet this half on Sisney. Shot is up, no good. Running the Lions with the rebound. Cooper Bowen with the basketball. Gets it over to Harrell. Inside to Andon Atwood, and he tries to thread the needle down underneath and throws it a little too strong. Out of bounds off the hands of Russell Best there. That was a bullet. Yeah. But you know what? Against this defense, you got to throw some bullets because they will uh, jump in the passing lane, intercept it, and take it the other way. Shot the lane is short. Atwood gets the rebound. He'll bring it up for Sisney. Stops and pops a 16-footer. No, will not go. Rebound Lovejoy. Had a good look at it. Yeah, he did. Wildcats on the attack. <laughs> Some kind of a spin move in the lane there by Burl Wynn Reed. Maybe that's why his name is Burl Wind. <laughs> he did the windmill. There. Cuts the lead to one with 549 to go in the game. We'll back with more in just a moment. 
At the end of a hospital stay, families are often faced with difficult decisions about their loved ones needing skilled rehabilitation care. Regardless of where your loved one's hospital is, the Transitional Care Rehab Program at Hamilton Memorial Hospital can help. Our skilled rehab and nursing care can provide twice daily physical and occupational therapies, daily access to providers, and private bed and bathrooms, all right here close to your family's home. If you're faced with care decisions, ask your loved one's care planner about Hamilton Memorial Hospital Transitional Care Rehabilitation or call 643 643- Five eight two four. For you here, Sisney leads it by one, 42-41, with 5.49 to go in the ball game, and the running lines have the basketball. Harrell will bring it up the court. Lovejoy looks like they're going to start trying to trap and gamble yeah, a little yeah. bit. Double Bowen team with the it. ball. Yep, they are. <clears throat> Bowen with it out front. Got to take care of the basketball and not turn it over. Yeah, they're, they're uh, definitely ratcheting up the defense here. Atwood has it. They've matched up man-to-man now instead of the zone. They're coming yeah. after the ball. And Just timeout. he wants a timeout. Yep. Kevin Bowen saw what we saw, and yeah. he uh, called timeout to discuss it a little yep. bit. So while he discusses that, we'll hear from another one of our sponsors. We'll be right back. It's the heating season, and Wayne White Propane and Sporting Goods has you covered with fast, reliable propane delivery service for your home or farm. And if you need those propane bottles filled for your grill or camper, Wayne White Propane and Sporting Goods can do it. Looking for a wide selection of guns and ammunition? You'll find it at Wayne White Propane and Sporting Goods. You can even search online through their website at waynewhitepropane.com. And don't forget, they also sell propane grills, smokers, and deep fryers at Wayne White Propane and Sporting Goods. Well, Ron, we've seen two pretty competitive basketball games. How are we going to top it in the championship game? Yeah, um, and, yeah. I mean, and mo- other than that 23-12 first quarter in that fifth-place game, I mean, the games have been tight throughout. They sure have. All right, Sisney with the basketball, trying to nurse this one-point lead with 5.22 to play in the game. Cooper Bowen out front, guarded closely. As Lovejoy has been uh, switching to the man-to-man, and they're coming after the basketball. Atwood has it now. Atwood leaves it to Harrell. Harrell will stop, shoot from the elbow, missed it. Rebound Lovejoy. They got a chance to take the lead. Here comes Pierre Lucas. He's taking it all the way down, and he scores the bucket. And a foul. And that's going to give Lovejoy the one-point lead with 4.57 left, and Lucas will be at the line. Nice move. That's the Euro step. Yeah, it was. That was travel back in my day. <laughs> Cooper Bowen on the foul. Chance for an and one. He and got it. And he got it. Yeah, I'm thinking if they would have had that Euro step back when I played, I could have scored a lot more points. <laughs> you know, I think we all could have. Yeah. I think we all could have. And no three-pointer back then? Yeah, that's true. That would have made up for not having a three-pointer yeah. back then. And we had one year where they wouldn't let us dunk, too. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, but my junior year, we could not dunk. Senior year, we could. It was crazy. Anyway, we've got us a two-point game here. Sisney needs a bucket. They are down 44-42. Cooper Bowen. Oh, oh look at that. Way. Wide open. Wide open, and he ties the game. Good move there by Cooper Bowen. Kind of like the Red Seas parted there. Yeah. 4.38 to play in the contest. Who wants this third-place trophy? It is up for grabs. Pierre Lucas with it for Lovejoy. Out to Jeremy McLaurin. Oh. There's a steal. Sisney's going to push it the other way. All the way in is Keck, and he's fouled. Landon Keck. I think that's on Pierre Lucas to be his fourth. Yes, that's a big foul with 4.18 left. They have to have him on the floor. Yeah, they do. He's done a good job of keeping himself in the game. Yeah. Keck with nice anticipation in the steal that time. Trying to make him pay at the line. He left it short. Might be the legs getting tired the way that Could shot be. looked. Let's see if he can put a little more oomph on it this time. He got that one over the rim. One point assisting lead. 45 44. If you're Sisney, you need a stop here. Pierre Lucas, a little give and go. Three orange shirts around him. 
And oh, they're going to change that. I think it went off the feet. Yep. Officials get together and talking okay. about it. They're going to give it back to Lovejoy. That's good officiating there. Yep. When you were officiating, did you have to do that once in a while? Get yeah. Help from another official, and you didn't mind absolutely. doing that, did you? No, no. You want to get the call right? Yep. Here's a pass inside. There's a collision. Which way is it going to be called? A block? Yes, it is. It's going to be called a block on Sisney. Yeah, that ball went in, didn't it? Yeah. They are going to count yeah. the bucket. Yep, it did go in. And the foul will go against Russell Best, his second. Yeah, if you're 100% sure about that, Ryan, like you said, that is good officiate. You want to run in there and tell your partner you're absolutely positive uh -huh. what you saw. Yep. Jeremy McLaren gives Lovejoy a two-point lead, 47-45. We have under four minutes to play in the game. Here's Cooper Bowen in the lane, left it short. Rebound Lovejoy. Sisney now playing chase. They need to get the ball back. And that's a charging foul. On Jeremiah McLaren. Made the pass, then made contact. Yeah. Gives the ball back to Sisney. Pass and crash, they call it. Pass and crash, I love it. 335 left. And there's a foul away from the basketball. That's that's uh, Jeremiah McLaren again. He's went from one to three fouls in a hurry here. He's on the hold. I think his feathers are a little ruffled right now after that last call. Mm -hmm. He goes down the other end and commits another foul. Well, it's a one and one now the rest of the way for Sisney. And yeah. at the line is Andon Atwood. Yeah. He's not the guy you <laughs> want to send there no. if you're Lovejoy. No. Yeah, if I'm if I'm coaching a game against Sisney, I'm like, do not foul Andon Atwood. Do not foul <laughs> number eleven. <laughs> Whatever you do. Oh man. He is perfect at the line. Yeah. And was perfect in the first game we did. He yeah. was twelve for twelve the first game we did yeah. at the tournament. Twenty one out of twenty one <laughs> that I've seen. Three nineteen left here in the He ball may game. have missed every free throw he took in him other games, but <laughs> <laughs> Travel. Oh, yeah. big turnover there. Big turnover by Jeremy McLaren. Gives the ball back to Sisney with 3.13 left. We're all tied at 47 all. Who's going to break through and win this trophy? Backdoor cut. And an Atwood up for the shot. Got it. But he's stuffing the stat sheet. Big play there. Gives Sisney a two-point lead. 2.51 left. Yeah, they're in the bonus. If they can get a stop here, they can hold the ball. And there that we go. shot is missed, and they've got the ball. As Russell Best has it, and he's fouled. Three got another foul. Yeah. Jeremiah McLaren was going for the steal, but was whistled for the foul. We'll go to the other end. Sisney shooting, one and bonus. So Lovejoy has six players, and they have two starters with four fouls. This could get interesting. Mm -hmm. But it's not Atwood at the line. No, it's, Russ, it's not. So it's there's, Russell Best. There's hope for the Wildcats. Has Best been the line in this game? Uh, no. His free throw is he got good. It. Got the roll. Now, this is a big free throw because this could make it a two-possession game with 2.42 left. Yep. So this is the one he really wants. Got, got it. it. Four-point lead for Sisney with 2.38 left in the game. Lovejoy needs to convert on this possession. Sisney just trying to play good defense here. Yeah, they do. They need to score this Here's possession. Here's Pierre Lucas with a three. three. Got it. Did a crossover dribble and then let her fly. Cut the lead to one, 51-50 with 2.18 left. This game is not over yet. Stay tuned, we'll be back with more in a moment. Carter Turf and Tractor is now open in their beautiful new location on West Main Street in Fairfield in the former Sabalon building. 
Carter Turf and Tractor is your area dealer for high quality Kubota tractors in a variety of sizes. Perfect for a landscaping business or to easily handle a variety of jobs around your home or farm. They can customize a solution for your needs. They also have the Kubota RTV utility vehicles for on-road and off-road transportation and hauling needs. When there's mowing or lawn work to be done, Carter Turf and Tractor has you covered with Exmark riding mowers and walk-behind mowers. They also feature a good selection of Echo brand brush cutters, trimmers and chainsaws, as well as Honda and Generac generators. Come in and see for yourself at the new Carter Turf and Tractor, open 8 to 5 Monday through Friday and 8 to 2 on Saturday. Hey, well, I got a chance. Let me uh, remind you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. That's areasports.net on YouTube. We uh, upload most of our games to YouTube, and you're notified whenever games are there. So that way, if you miss a game, you'll get notified. You'll be able to see it. And, of course, you can go on there and watch, uh, watch games and interviews with coaches and episodes of the Sports Couch and stuff like that dating back, uh, oh, I don't know, 10 or 12 years ago. Uh, a lot of stuff on there, basketball, football, you name it. Yeah, you guys had me on there one time. I, you know, Danny had me on yeah, there. There you go, on the, on our YouTube channel. So subscribe to the YouTube channel for areasports.net, and you won't miss out on anything, all right? Okay, Sisney with the basketball, nursing that one-point lead, and there's a foul. Number three may have just fouled out. Mm. No, they're calling on number five. Number five, okay. That foul is on Jeremy McLaren. So at the line will be Gavin Harrell for Sisney. You can also follow us on Twitter, areasports.net on Twitter. You'll get notified of a lot of stuff that we're doing, too. We will be uh, providing almost wall-to-wall -wall coverage of the El Dorado Holiday Tournament. We'll have 24 of the 26 games down there at the El Dorado Holiday Tournament, which starts the day after Christmas. Big uh, miss on that free throw. Big, big miss, because now Lovejoy can take the lead. Minute 49 left. Here's the freshman from the corner. Missed it. There's a big rebound by Sisney on the weak side. Gavin Harrell comes out of there with it on the dribble. Lovejoy's got a chase. Sisney just needs to take care of the basketball here. Still a lot of time left. Minute 35. Harrell with it. He missed a free throw a moment ago, but he had a chance to redeem himself now. Just take care of the basketball. Yeah, take care of the basketball and make free throws. And uh, You're working against the clock right now, basically. As uh, with it out front is Cooper Bowen. Bowen drives down the lane, makes the shot good with left the left hand. hand. Big, big bucket there by Bowen. Three-point Sisney lead. Still a one-possession game, though, so you got to guard that three by the Wildcats. 58 seconds left in the contest. With the basketball is Reed. Reed out by the half line. There's a steal. Oh, that's huge. Picked up by Keck. Takes it down, got the bucket, got the reverse. Big steal induced by Keck, five-point Sisney yeah. lead. Pierre Lucas couldn't go after him or he'd fouled out of the game. You're right. 34 seconds left. Lovejoy needs a bucket. They're down five. It's a two-possession game. Sisney trying to play defense without fouling. There's a shot up, no good. The follow is good by Lovejoy as Jeremiah McLaren scores, cutting the lead to 55-52. Yeah, not over. No, it's not over. Sisney will have the ball and a three-point lead with 24 <laughs> seconds. 24 seconds left in the contest. We'll take another short break and be right back at Wayne City in just a moment. Back here at Wayne City, Randy Olson, along with longtime basketball official Ron Stannard. And, um, hey, this has been a fun game. It has been. Yeah, it's still undecided for sure. I think uh, Lovejoy's going to try hard to get a steal here uh, without fouling. And if that mm -hmm. doesn't work, then uh, as that clock winds down, they're going to have to foul. Yeah, they will have to. Again, 24 seconds left. 
It's a three-point Sisney lead. They will have it length of the floor, but you know Lovejoy's coming. They're coming hard. Yeah, they're going to pick them up full court. Full court man-to-man. Gavin Harrell will take the ball out. He can run the baseline. He does. He gets it into Atwood. Don't foul him. Not Atwood yet. Atwood drives up the sideline. There's a triple team, and now he is fouled. Mm -hmm. And Atwood will go to the line, and that's who you want the, the ball in the hands of if you're Sisney. Number five just fouled <coughs> out. <coughs> Jeremy McLaren. And no, I'm sorry. No. That's four. That's four on him. Oh, that's four. Good job by Sisney to get the ball to Andon Atwood. Mm, you bet. Yeah. That's what you wanted. Yep. And oh. he misses his first free throw of the game. But he'll get another one. 18 seconds left. If he makes this one, it becomes a two-possession game. Sisney's going to drop back. They get completely out of the lane. And he makes the second one. Lovejoy with the ball. 16 seconds left. Down four. Long three put up. It's no mm. good. There's a rebound by Best, and he's fouled from behind quickly by Burrowin Reed, and we'll walk to the other end, and Sisney's going to shoot free throws again. That stops the clock with 11 seconds left. They didn't have to have a three right there. No, did they? they didn't have to. No. Didn't have to. There was enough time to score a two mm -hmm. and go for a steal. Right. That don't work, then foul. Yep. Russell Best at the line this time for Sisney, and he's short. Yeah, we're in a super bonus, so he gets another one. Got it. Five-point Sisney lead, nine seconds left. They can let him go now. Ball's loose, picked up by Atwood, and they're going to chase him and foul him, and Atwood will go to the line with three seconds left and all but over here for the Sisney running Lions. They are going to capture the third place trophy here yep. at the 68th annual Conrad Allen Holiday Tournament. And Sisney finished third last year. Did they? They sure did. Well, they got everybody but uh, Russell Best coming back. Yes, they do. That would good on the first one. And he swishes the second one. Seven point lead, three seconds left. That's going to do it. Long shot rims off by Lovejoy. Sisney wins this one by a score of 59 to 52. They capture the third place trophy here at the 68th annual Conrad Allen Holiday Tournament. We'll uh, let you see that trophy presentation here after the players High five each other, or maybe I should say low five each other as they go by. And we have a lot more fans in the doorway trying to filter in here for this championship game, which will be coming up next between North Clay and Wayne City, which we're um, almost on time. We may start a little bit late, but it's getting really close to starting on time. At this time, we would like to recognize the Lovejoy Wildcats for finishing fourth place in this year's tournament. Lovejoy will get their fourth place trophy. Sisney gets the third place trophy. And we would also like to congratulate the Sisney Run Lions cheerleader, cheerleaders for their first place finish. And the Sisney cheerleaders get awarded the first place finish in the cheerleading competition here at the Conrad Island Tournament. Congratulations to them. So, Sisney able to double dip. They win the basketball game, win the third place trophy, and the cheerleaders also win the cheerleading competition here at the Conrad Allen Tournament. Ron Stannard's working on our post game stats. We'll come back and share those with you in just a moment because we've got a championship game to get ready for here in just a little bit. All that and more up here live on areasports.net. The difference between profit and loss is razor thin in today's market. Luckily, your GSI dealer is there to help you stay in the black. 
Capturing futures carry and improving your basis with increased on-farm storage on average could earn a 50 cent per bushel difference. Taking advantage of early harvest and saving with on-farm drying makes a profitability difference. Proven and dependable grain systems that boost your bottom line, that's the GSI difference. Vaughn Equipment is a family-owned and operated business in Fairfield that's committed to providing quality equipment to the farm, construction, tractor-trailer, marine, and oil field industries. They feature a great selection of new and pre-owned trucks, trailers, farm equipment, construction equipment, and rental equipment. Their inventory changes weekly, and you can see it all in person or on their website. Whatever you're looking for to do the job right, Vaughn Equipment can help you. They're located at 1102 South 1st Street in Fairfield or call 842-3500. Building relationships, supporting the community, and service. These are the things Country Financial stands for. They're more than just an office you may pass by as you drive through town. They're neighbors who lend a helping hand and support the fabric of our community, including charitable organizations, sports, financial education, and civic organizations. Since you're already neighbors, get together and chat. Call your local Country Financial representative, Chad Mitstarfer in Norris City at 378-3193 to talk about the things that are important to you and how he can help you protect them. All right, our final score here. You see it on our Fairfield National Bank scoreboard. Sisney defeats Lovejoy 59-52 to capture third place here at the Conrad Allen Tournament. Tell us all about it here, Ron. All right, well, for the uh, third place winning Sisney Running Lions, they were led in scoring by Andon Atwood with 29 points. Wow. Yeah, you know, we had uh, a player from Crab Orchard had 28 points in that other game, so mm -hmm. he got him by one. He's got 29 points. And uh, he missed a free throw, Randy. Missed one. He is human. Nine, 12, yeah, 12 out of 13 from the free throw line for Andon Atwood. Total of 29 good. points. Russell Best chipped in with five points. He got all of those in the second half. Landon Keck, a double-figure score with 11 points, as did Cooper Bowen, also had 11 points. And Kate Atwood, the freshman, had a three-pointer in that third quarter. The three points, a total of 59 as five players broke the scoring column. And as a team, the Sisney running line shot 18 out of 21 from the free throw line. Wow, that's uh, that's some good shooting. And sure for is. the uh, Lovejoy Wildcats, Jeremiah McLaren had six points. They were led in scoring by Pierre Lucas with a total of 18. Played most of the game in foul trouble, but had a really great game. Jeremy McLaren had uh, joined him in double figures with 15 as did Burlwyn Reed, who had 10, and uh, Lovejoy's freshman Odell Jordan had a three-pointer for three. That's a total of 52 points, and the Wildcats made three out of six from the free-throw line. All right, that's our final. Sisney wins the third-place trophy, 59-52. We have uh, North Clay and Wayne City coming up next in the championship game. You'll have to refresh your browser, refresh the website, and rejoin us for that championship game.